Hey guys, Stealth Man here. I needed to jump in on this because I've seen a lot of debate and discussion happening on Twitter from the community and unfortunately no one's really getting across the message that needs to come across. New Vegas was not retconned. In fact, I'm going to go over the whole brand new timeline according to the new lore added in by the TV series. Let's begin. The NCR is created in 2189. And in 2198, Shady Sands becomes the capital of the NCR. In 2241, the NCR became the largest economic and political power in the California. Now, little funny note, this is the start year for Fallout 2. 15 years onwards, we have an event missing from the timeline on that chalkboard. This is the NCR Brotherhood War. Now, this war did continue on from the 2250s all the way to the 2280s, so it's probably kind of important that it didn't show up. It probably wouldn't have made a lot of sense to put on there. But I think that this is an important event that did end up taking part in 2271's Fall of Shady Sands appearing. Now, for reference as well, later on, Hank was officially released into the vault in 2268 as a part of the vault's triennial trade program. In 2269, President Peterson buckled to lobbyists from the Republican Farmer Committee and Stockman's Association, leading to Brahmin and agricultural barons who consolidated power over most of the arable land within the Republic. The very next year, in 2270, NCR forces under Kimball uprooted tribes around Bullhead City, making him a national hero. The following year, 2271, the Rangers are absorbed into the NCR, forcing the NCR into expanding within the Mojave to protect Vegas and its regions from the Legion as a part of their treaty, and Hank McLean is elected overseer of Vault 33. By 2272, the Mojave Outpost was established, and in 2273, Kimball is elected to office after spending two months in political life, having retired from military service. By 2274, Mr. House begins the renovations of New Vegas and forms the Three Families. During this time, the NCS signed a treaty with House and the Three Families, giving the NCR control over Hoover Dam and McCarran Airport. In exchange, the NCR recognises House's control over the Strip, as well as giving 5% of the dam's power to continue powering the Strip. With NCR control over the dam, the Mojave chapter of the Brotherhood of Steel began a two-year-long guerrilla war. While President Kimball's first act as president is abolishing any remaining limits on acreage and herd sizes, allowing the barons to finally cement their power within the NCR. By 2275, Camp McCarran is completed. With its completion comes a full NCR deployment, rising tensions even further with the Brotherhood of Steel chapter in the Mojave. And leading in to 2276, Legion forces begin gathering and preparing on the opposite end of Hoover Dam. 2276, the NCR and the Brotherhood break from guerrilla warfare and skirmishes. The NCR carry out Operation Sunburst, rallying the Brotherhood chapter at Helios 1, outnumbering them roughly 20 to 1. The Brotherhood only end up losing the battle due to dwindling ammunition. They retreated from the battle, having lost half their respective chapter. Now in 2277, we have the Fall of Shady Sands, which I believe is a combination of the previous events and the government losing power over the Republic coming to its absolute peak, as well as all of the following events. The Legion move into the Mojave, sitting up Fortification Hill. The Courier delivers a package from the NCR discovered at Navarro to the Divide, and after departing, this package sends launch commands to the missiles in Ashton and Hopeville. NCR and Legion forces are trapped underground from the nuclear detonations and savage winds from the Big Empty's meteorological experiments, cutting an NCR supply line to the Mojave. The first battle of Hoover Dam takes place. Legion forces, under the command of Joshua Graham, attempt to take the dam from the NCR. This attack is a success, 
However, NCR forces eliminate Legion commanders and the bulk of the Legion troops in Boulder City as a trap when they blew up the town. In 2278, NCR troops conduct the Bitter Springs Massacre. As well, in 2281, New Vegas begins. Joe Cobb's raiding party attacks a group of Crimson Caravan traders on the Long 15. Ringo flees to Good Springs, with Volpus in Coulter and a group of legionaries attacking Nipton and killing all NCR, powder gangers and locals through beheading or crucifixion. Boxcars and Oliver Swanick are the only survivors. NCR Senate elections are due soon. Boneyard representatives block further military funding to gain votes from dissatisfied citizens with a lack of progress in the Mojave campaign. Senator Morales is up for re-election and is being backed by the Brahmin barons for his political position. He seeks to score cheap points with the anti-mutant electorate, going as far as hiring a mercenary band to harass Jacobstown, having used these same mercenaries to help secure Brahmin barons land at Oak Creek from their original inhabitants. The NCR are having supply chain issues. The Long 15 continues getting longer. Supplies and reinforcements are slow and slower respectively. And most experienced troopers in the NCR are down chasing non-existent threats in Baja under Kimball's orders. The NCR forces within the Mojave are lacking standard supplies in the form of standard issue body armor and service rifles, while heavy infantry power armor units are back within NCR territory, protecting the interests of Brahmin barons against small-time raider threats, further providing evidence that the NCR's core territory is still pestered by these gangs, even despite their continued growth. However, it also shows that the Brahmin barons have come to so much power that even with a single vote, their wealth is enough that they can force the NCR's strongest military resources into serving them personally. O'Hanrahan explains that over the years, there have been quite a large string of bad harvests, and due to this, he's joined the military so that his family won't end up starving to death. With Thomas Hildren also stating the NCR projects an imbalance between production and consumption, predicting mass starvation within a decade. Despite sharecroppers telling NCR officials they aren't supplying enough water, officials dismiss this as an excuse. In 2282, the Second Battle of Hoover Dam changes the Mojave forever. However, from Episode 8, the beginning, we can determine the Brotherhood of Steel chapter in the Mojave never allied themselves with the NCR. Now, to determine the destruction year of Shady Sands, we need to determine two specific characters from the new show. And it's not who you may think. Maximus is actually a non-issue in figuring out the destruction year, as Lucy and her brother Norm were both taken to Shady Sands according to Moldova. When we see a child Lucy and her non-pregnant mother Rose in the flashback, Knowing that Lucy and her cousin Chet dated for about 10 years, it's safe to assume Lucy is roughly 18 to 21 years old. And a funny little bit of math is that if Lucy is 19, as of the TV show, she would have been born in 2277, smack dab, during the fall of Shady Sands. Given Fallout's continuous nature to give singular people within its stories a large destiny shifting position it's entirely possible that the showrunners decided that this would be a funny little joke at her heralding in the fall of shady sands however all of this is unconfirmed at the moment i don't really have any grounds to base lucy's birth year on nor her age but as we see lucy as a child she's likely five to six years old you can match up with two important dates in the timeline the first important date would put the bombing of Shady Sands in the same year as the end of New Vegas. This is if she's five years old. If we see her when she's six years old, this aligns us into 2283, the same year that Arthur Maxon reunites the Brotherhood outcasts with Lion's Chapter and becomes the supreme commander of the Brotherhood of Steel with the full backing of the Western Brotherhood elders. This also brings in the Brotherhood's stance on outsiders being welcomed into their ranks officially, which allows Maximus to be adopted into the Brotherhood of Steel alongside other survivors of the Shady Sands attack. 
Now that's my official standpoint on the bombing of Shady Sands. I do believe it happened in 2283. I do believe that this is the time. Um, we see Moldova and Rose in a somewhat or a very peaceful and happy Shady Sands. There does not seem to be an issue. There seems to be no fear uh, of an impending uh, Legion threat from New Vegas. Um, there seems to be no power problems. This leads me to believe that the NCR actually held the dam. Now, I think that they held the dam, and then when they got bombed, the NCR was in complete disarray. And I think that House or someone on the Strip ended up taking advantage of this and going ahead and really hammering home that I think an independent Vegas is what Hank McLean is going to end up running into. Likely with Yes Man at the helm, Hank is able to become the ultimate manager and run things his way against the new Brotherhood of Steel that we get to see in this and the NCR remnants. And it's likely he's going to do this in hopes of discovering anyone else from vault -Tec. But I'm going to leave it there for now. I don't want to ramble on. I do have one more video that I want to make, and it is regarding a retcon that I haven't really seen anyone touch on just yet. But stand by.